thrifters and reseller friends, it's Yvonne. It's Labor Day weekend, 2019, and I'm going to do a what sold video. Hey, before we start, let's keep in mind all of our reseller friends, family, other friends that live in Florida. Okay, so let's keep them in mind, in our hearts, and our thoughts, good thoughts, good vibes. Okay, okay, so we're at my store, Mile High Scene. Let's go to um, items for sale. And down to sold listings. Okay. So um, I use some of my auctions to run through clearance stuff to at least try to get some of my money back and it creates some activity in the store so whenever you see some of these low things it's where i ran clearance items through auctions uh, <clears throat> i'm still at the basic store level so 250 fixed listings and 250 auctions and i'm at about 260 70 listings so i'm using up some of my auctions too i'm not wasting my fixed price listing allotment for my clearance items. Plus I do them on like five day auctions because that, that does not cost extra. And so it's just kind of, um, you know, creating a little bit more attraction to my store, hopefully. Okay, so just things that didn't work out. Either I got them free or they just, I give up, they didn't work out. <laughs> All right, so some of the hard goods my first sirocco piece if you've been following me you know i've been taking a deeper dive into vintage vintage and retro items and expanding my hard goods again so some things i'm selling that really aren't high dollar or you know even medium dollar like over my 20 dollar threshold i shoot for it's not a hard and fast rule but it's just a general what i shoot for but I want to mark some things off my reseller bucket list. So, as I'm learning, it's been about eight or nine weeks now. So this is my first find of Sirocco, this like um, Hollywood Regency look. And that didn't take very long. What, didn't I just show that in a haul? Didn't we just find that on Thrift With Me and I showed it in a haul? So, I did sell that Barbarian belt. I got, I took a best offer of 30 because she bought both these items. So, that, was i knew that would sell i love finding that kind of stuff i always look at the belt section so she bought this and she bought this 3j workshop which is a lower division um of johnny was like let's say for juniors maybe a little bit more affordable price points so i actually have had this shirt before myself in orange there's a picture of me in somewhere i think my posh mark about the posher uh, wearing this at a fireworks um, display at my daughter's after wedding party. It was it's adorable. I didn't even know what it was back then. So I found it at Ross for like twelve ninety nine. It's just adorable. You know, it's when the embroidered shirts kind of came back all the rage. This was about eight nine years ago. And then I found out, and I was like, ooh. So even after buying it at Ross for twelve ninety nine, wearing it for a couple years. I take care of my clothes the way I wash them. I just don't throw everything in the washer and dryer. Um, but I still sold it and got like $40 or so for it. So three-day workshop is the division of Johnny Was. There's also Grace and Peta and Love and Liberty. Make a note of that if you don't know. Okay, Donna, um, Karen, Black Velvet Blazer. This is the nicest velvet like not that cheap stuff so tall friendly because it has longer sleeves which sometimes donna karen stuff does it makes me think of like um karen kane stuff tends to have longer sleeves too so i'm a tall girl if you follow me you're probably sick of me saying that i'm a tall girl but so some things i pick up because i think they're good for um for my tall squad so that i took fifty dollars and ralph lauren these don't go for as much as if it was just the sweater <laughs> for an adult. Then that would be high, high dollar. Okay, I just wanted to sell that. 
And look how quickly that sold. I just bought that and listed it. It sold like within 36 hours. Harley Davidson stuff is still doing well, even though some people underprice their t-shirts, in my opinion, still doing well. This was a boo-boo. They asked to cancel it, um, so I still have it. But I'm selling this one cheaper because it doesn't have everything it's supposed to have. But it is a collectible item, so I didn't want to leave it behind. If you go thrifting with me, you already know that. This is the first time I've ever bombed on a Tasha Polizzi piece. Um, the colorway was just not good, apparently. So I put it on the clearance auction, $10 plus shipping. So when it's all said and done, I got my money back and maybe made $2.00. That's the first time ever I bombed on that. I, so something about the color just was not good on that one. So my mom likes this band, this group, I should say, and she has dropped a lot of money to go. And Hannah and I usually go with her and drive and everything so she could just relax and enjoy the whole event. So, you know, she'll buy our tickets and then we handle everything we just get her there and let her enjoy herself and so this was some items because she does the vip she's very serious she's in the groups and stuff like they take this stuff serious so she got the vip package that came with some some swag so i actually had mine and hannah's and a couple i think a couple extras but anyways i bundled some of the extras that i had and i got 40 dollars pretty quick for that free swag this is my first cambridge glass piece it's so weird i bought that a long time ago because i just thought it was beautiful um kind of mermaidy right and it just sat and sat and sat i'm like what is wrong this is beautiful cambridge is a thing it's from the caprice line i only want 14 dollars for it um, and it's so weird the law of attraction is so weird not until I got decided to go deeper into vintage and, and not be afraid of selling glass as well. Like now that I'm in that groove for about eight or nine weeks, all of a sudden it sells. So I don't know, but I'm glad that it found a good home. It's, it's way prettier than the picture even shows. So I told you this would be good. I'm assuming you follow me. If, uh, I told you this would be good. It was. I'm easy on the Hawaiian shirts now because there's a lot of competition. It's like mugs, t-shirts, and Hawaiian shirts are like the gateway into eight reselling now. So uh, I'm really careful, but this was a Ralph Lauren, and I really liked the special tiki. Oh, I have an offer for something. Okay, I'll get to you later. <clears throat> the tiki vibe was great on this one. So I got a good price. That actually went to England using the eBay's global shipping program. This was a very vintage Christian Dior bag. Okay, I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> so, go away. <laughs> I just listed that. Anyways, I think this was like a gift with a gift, but it was still new. It had the hang tags on it. You can see right there. And um, just like a makeup travel bag. And so that, I've never had something get so many views so quickly. I'm sure it's because it said Christian Dior, right? So it got a lot of views really quickly and a lot of watchers and someone finally um, sent me a really good offer. And although I kind of liked it for the way it led people my direction, um, I went ahead and let it go because I liked what this person said with their offer. They said something that I liked. And so I let them have that for $30. And I think they cherish it. Um, that was just a vintage Snoopy shower curtain. I just didn't want to leave it behind. So I saved it and sold it. This has a slight flaw. Okay, so ignore that. Let's get to the good stuff. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you already know that I sold these finally. Um, well, it didn't really take, I shouldn't say finally. It really didn't take that long. But I've got this. Let's look at this uh, more closely, okay? there these you could just tell that these were quality okay so i'm still about the mug life i've been ranting because i'm tired of people teasing other people especially new sellers especially new sellers for messing with mugs 
stop, okay? There are still some mugs to be found that are worth money, and here you go. Even if they're not, you know, even if someone wants to just make five, ten dollars just selling mugs, just let's just leave them alone. And anyways, as they grow and learn, just like I did, they'll start finding these epic ones as well, right? So this is from Italy, Italy Espresso Coffee Italian, and this was a collab piece. They did some art collabs, and this one was Pedro Almodorva. He's an artist. So, 80 bucks for those. And then the Death, Death Wish Coffee collab with Deneen Pottery. Now, I always look at Deneen. Let me show you that. Let's pull that up. Okay, there it is. See? Deneen Pottery. And you can tell they have this look because certain, like, they do a lot for events and hotels, restaurants. And so if it's a really interesting place or event, um, I'll pick these up. So I spotted it and I took a look at it and I'm like, ooh, now this is a Death Wish coffee. So this is like a double threat. And um, yeah, that, this is definitely a thing. So... If you're still learning, teach yourself about Deneen Pottery and then also check out what's going on with the Death Wish coffee scene, which is relatively new. This is a only a middle of the line price range for this for Death Wish coffee mug. Some of them I saw four, five hundred, six hundred dollars. Okay. Now I let this one go a little cheaper and let me show you why. Let me pull it up and I'll show you. Because I was very clear. This picture might show. We might be able to do it with this one. Yeah. Can you see that little hairline? Uh, I'm pointing this if you can tell. See this little hairline? It's right in here. Okay. Um, but it was under the glazing. So oh, <clears throat> some kind of factory mistake. It was like not really like that someone dropped it or broke it. It was under the glazing. So I talked about that, and that's why I let this one go for like 100 or 105. Still a good profit, right? Definitely. Okay. And I wanted to pull this one up closer. Uh, <laughs> if you're older, you remember Rachel McClish, um, the hot it girl for workout, working out videos and athletic wear. And um, this is before we were all using the term athleisure. This was definitely in the 80s bodybuilder, female bodybuilder. She had a few acting roles. She's still alive. Rachel McClish. So that is why <laughs> fun clothes, serious body. So that is why I got that much money for these new with tags, $36. Okay. And that was fun, right? Let's keep on going little mod I cannot tell if it was really like older vintage or not but I knew it was awesome and for all I know it could be modern and it comes with you know like telefloral like they make stuff for telefloral or FTD flowers I don't know but it had that mod atomic look so I marketed it like this you know atomic base space age mid-century modern pop art design and someone bought that and gave it a good home. I'm glad. If it would have been a different color, I would have kept that. Um, it was adorable. So I was right about this. This sold. This is kind of like a fanny pack. It's called Hip Clips. But it comes with little magnet clips, um, little clips, and you just clip it on something, your dress, skirt, waistband, belt. Um, so it's a new a new thing, and some of them with certain patterns will sell for more money. But it was quick and easy sale. It didn't cost much. The Double D Ranch Skirt, this took a little longer than I expected. These crinkle, tiered, pleated broomstick skirts, um, usually $15, $20, but this is a Double D Ranch, and the quality was there. If you're new to clothing, look up Double D Ranch for their jackets and western wear clothing. Um, high dollar, some of it's high dollar. So that's why I got $46 for just a black crinkle tiered um, pleated broomstick skirt, okay? Sold that Mercedes Benz tumbler. <laughs> this, I did sell it, we saw that, we ended up selling that. Um, 
it was they did it was non-paying, so I relisted it. Okay, let's go to this. I pulled this one up too. I remember Dungeons and Dragons. It's been around since I was a kid. Since I was a teenager, the boys played this before there were like video games. Before the you know when the only video game was Pong, Atari's Pong. <laughs> I remember usually mostly the boys, the teenage boys, playing Dungeons and Dragons. And it still is happening today. So this was um, Return of the Tomb of Horrors. And it had some extra stuff in it. And for some reason, one of these pieces alone, let me get to it, one of these pieces alone, this, sells for like $20. There's something about this special module pamphlet it's just a I guess four page but you know just opens up it's not much to it so anyways I'm I'm just like here it all is <laughs> whatever so I had some answer some questions every once in a while give people some you know some more pictures count a few more things but um, this sold if I'm not mistaken it stayed right here in Colorado too so that went for one fifty. Oh gosh. Okay, around one forty, one fifty. I think I paid like five ninety nine for the whole packaged up bundle set. It was in the books. This I learned the uranium glass um, that glows with the UV. So that's what this is about. This is a Fenton piece. Um, if you're new like me to expanding on glassware and vintage glassware, I'm not really, I can only give you a brief generalized thing, <laughs> monologue about what I know about this. If you're interested in more, just take a note and look it up. But there are, there was a period where glass had some uranium salts in it and some of it glows in the dark. Some of it makes it more is more valuable that way. Some people have like big curios of nothing but uranium glass from different makers with a black light installed and instead of the cabinet all glows in the dark. It's really quite fascinating, okay? And then shout out to Dub Pinching Pesos, as usual, um, the host of the Reseller Stew Show. I'm one of the panel members and we are coming back in October, yes. She said, she told us last week, she's getting everything together, I'll let her say what she's been doing herself, but it's pretty exciting. And we are coming back in October to that panel show on her channel, Pinching Pesos. So, a Mr. Coffee item again. This is the Cafe Coco that, it was so funny. I sold it. I sold one that was still new in package. Dropped it off, went to the thrift store, and boom, there was another one new in package. So, I just brought it home and just recycled the exact same listing. It was awesome. And then that, this one didn't take quite as long to sell. But a lot of the Mr. Coffee, cal, cafe, lattes, cocos, just a lot of that stuff sells. Um, and I learned that from Deb uh, Pinching Pesos. Even if it's older, it will sell. And I've seen her part things out. You know, she's kind of the queen of parking out appliances, kitchen appliances and things. She makes that a thing and does well. But there are a few people that do that, but in my opinion, she's like the queen of that. Okay, some more blowouts. Joseph Ripkoff, there again, where I just, usually Joseph Ripkoff from Canada, that stuff, sells for more. That should have been a 40, at least a $40, no less than a $40. Maybe the size was too small, I don't know, maybe it's too shiny. So I ran that one through my clearance at ten dollars i start them at five or ten dollars ten dollars if it's a better piece and this is why i don't do auctions because typically unless it's something really sought after you typically only will get like one bid so start i start my auctions at the least i'm going to take even though they're just clearance auctions so if you are bound and determined to stick with auctions really and you're new a lot of us will tell you that and heed that advice. I, Some people get away with starting the 99 cent auctions and it works for them to get the money they need. Um, I 
asking to do that, you really have to have sought after items and you need to have a following that you're known for doing that. Okay. Anyways, we'll talk about that sometime on a panel show or on a tips and tricks show. So again, checking off my, my reseller bolo list that I've expanded, um, bucket list. So a Ransburg um, metal container canister. So that was vintage. Um, this one was not in good shape, so I let it go rather cheap. I had lots of competition on this duffel bag. If it would have been in better shape, it would have been worth more money. Okay, don't discount it because of that cheap price, please. Um, Levi Strauss Olympics. So this is like another lesson of what I'm always talking about. If I have something that I that I think is worth, say, twenty dollars, just because everyone else is selling it for five, I'm I may not care. Because this is a good example. Say you were new and didn't think hard enough, and you and mine was the only sold listing, and you have one, or you're looking it up, and you go, ah, it's only twelve dollars. Well, it could be something that's worth more than twelve dollars if you opened up my listing, you would see that this was not in good condition. I just, I'm a Levi girl from way back. I love selling Olympic stuff. This was very retro, vintage. I just didn't want it to go to waste, right? So that's just a lesson for all of us. This was a bundle of free stuff I got. Um, this kind of, this is a lower dollar label and this kind of look is, mm, so I added some reasons why you might want to still buy this blinged out lower price dress that now inundates at Ross. <laughs> and so someone went for it, $10. It was still new with tags. Someone gave me a whole bunch of new with tags um, stuff, a little bit lower end. Some pieces were good and some of it was lower end. So I just ran it through my clearance, kind of like, you know, to draw attention. Okay, so my first jasperware item i had not found a wedgewood yet which i have learned is um more famous for this jasperware product this um was associated with a famous artist so that's why jasperware is it in here because i didn't really even know yet this sold really quickly so i don't know if an heir of Fern Cunningham Stone bought it, she's most noted for doing um, paintings. Not really this kind of stuff. I don't know if she just put her name in it <laughs> with extra name in it or what. I was real honest about everything, but someone bought that and it stayed a good sale. Okay, these came back. They didn't fit. No matter how many measurements you put in, sometimes it just doesn't work. I don't get very many returns. The Heise glass, this little tiny thing, I could just tell it was quality. So expanding my glass, I'm like, this is so beautiful. It's kind of like a smoky gray, black, bluish glass. You could just tell the quality. It's a little tiny creamer like thing. Like you can see that's my gloved hand holding it. So it's from the Star or Lodestar line series from Heise and the color they call it Dawn Smoke. So I put all that in there. Google Lens helped me quickly hold it right up so I learned. And um, it had the logo on the bottom. I didn't care if it sold or not because it was so interesting for such a cute little unassuming piece. Um, but Heise is a thing. So if you're expanding your glassware, vintage glassware knowledge, there's another name. This was rolling out. I told the guy, wait, when I grabbed it, I knew what it was. This was not your average t-shirt. This was the Ralph Lauren Denim and Supply. Denim and Supply, the Indian, um, the iconic Indian head. There's different versions of this Indian head thing. The last one I sold, it was like a coin and about the same price range. If you don't know, it just looks like an old worn out t-shirt, okay? So Ralph Lauren, Denim and Supply, the Indian um, series. There's a lot of different ones, okay? So if you're like me, when I watch other people, something I'm not sure of, I make a note. And then at night when I'm doing the research on my phone, I teach myself all these things. 
This came from a purse that I switched out the strap because that's all the rage. And so I sold the strap that it came with because it was real leather. So that paid for my new strap that I bought. I bought these for myself, new with tags. Um, I didn't quite like the fit, so I sold them. She loved them. This was just a fishnet robe in the lingerie section, but it was a 3X, super stretchy, not cheap, nice stretchy. I said, someone's going to like this for a beach cover-up, for a festival, for that look, um, festival, Coachella. Um, maybe not just a robe, okay? So I kind of found, made a picture um kind of close to that and I just put you know this is a lookbook ideal of a girl and I she was really thin but I made her look heavier because this was a 3x so I wanted to show you know a plus size girl hey this would look awesome like this so I made the picture stretched it out a little bit so she you know wasn't like real thin and um you know I just put you know lookbook model idea you know she was wearing it over a cute little light tank top and some khakis you know, like going to a festival. So that's why I got a pretty good price, a little bit less than that, a pretty good price um, for this. Lululemon, it's, it's in good shape. It's still quick and easy. I went to find the name of it, the color name. Lululemon um, labels their all their products and their colors, okay? And some people who are you collect Lululemon and they do, they're very serious. <laughs> don't believe me, there's like websites dedicated to everything Lululemon makes. Like, and not, you know, most of us will also use that for identification. Um, Lulu Fanatics and there's another one. Anyways, they keep track of everything. Vintage Wham Sutta, and this is that rainbow from the 80s, late 80s, early 90s. I had these when I was in my 20s, early 20s. Most all my girlfriends did too. I even had the shower curtain and towel set. And I thought about keeping it because it was still new and crisp, even though it was out of package. You know, you can tell when something's been washed and worn and used. And it was still crisp. The tag wasn't even like curled up or wrinkled. And I thought about keeping it because it was nostalgic, right? But it was only a twin. And then I was watching Stranger Things, and this season, the, oh, what is her name? Oh my gosh, I forgot. The little, the cute little strawberry blonde girl. She was in her bedroom, and this was her sheet, and I went, oh, snap. So there's going to be a run on those now. And so I put it up, and it sold quickly, $36 and $8 um, shipping. So I think at this point, even if you found one that wasn't still new and crisp, as long as it's not in too bad a shape, it's probably still worth an uplift. It's just a cute dress. I don't know. It was, it just had was quality. It's, the name is okay. New York and Company, New York and Company and Express. They're at the mall and online, of course. But they do nice clothing for like, that it seems to appeal mostly to 20s, 30s, maybe 40s because they remember where they're not, their income hasn't quite followed where they wanted it to be. But good clothing for um, going to going to school and being taken serious, that collegiate look, like that type of collegiate look, and new career girls. So because it's quality but it's at a good price and they do a lot of mix and match. They'll do a lot of classic that's good for business with just a slight flare, just a slight updated flare, okay? So um, New York and Company and Express stuff, I will take a look at. Also because especially, well, both of these, they'll do some longer inseams too, some tall sizes. And again, back to I'm a tall girl and I kind of try to help out the tall squad you know so that's why i did that and it worked i think 24 dollars. jimmy swagger <laughs> um i'm not sure why i bought and sold that but i guess because i know like this was controversial guy to jimmy swagger who else in my lifetime has been controversial 
the Haggart guy, and there was someone else. Oh, the Baker, Jim Baker. Anyways, Jimmy Swaggart, televangelist on TV. So I thought somebody's going to want that for some reason. <laughs> so some more um, closeout dresses that I paid three or four dollars for once on this big buyout. These I got at Ross for $12.99. And I just waited. It took a little longer than I anticipated. And hi, Highway. Highway's here. Hi, baby. I'm almost done. But I sold them. I took a best offer of $120. $120. But that's a good turnover. This is a higher end Levi's. They were even like satin lined, like rich people's clothes are, like inside, so that when you sit down and move, you know, they just feel better. They don't, you know, they're just flawless when you walk around. So, Levi's Made and Crafted, that's the name of the type, patchwork, satin lined. Just so you know, I love my kimonos. I always buy the good kimonos. Sometimes they put them in the lingerie aisle, okay? But sometimes they are, maybe, I don't know. But Velvet Burnout is always good, too. I don't think this was Velvet Burnout, but it was Burnout and Ombre. Ombre meaning that kind of like fade color. A vintage Whiting, Whiting, Whiting and Davis gold mesh purse. That was vintage and kind of a mesh chain mail. Mm -hmm. I'll just let you guys look. Some of this you remember. Not big money, but little fun quick sales. This little piece of fabric was only like, I don't know, this big. <laughs> but it had sexy construction workers on it. So that, that sold. This got attention immediately. I knew it would. This was one of those Afghans that was in great condition. It looked like somebody made it and then nothing happened with it. Someone didn't, whoever they gave it to, did not appreciate it or use it. It was still great shape. Looked like it hadn't been washed, no pilling. Super large. This was like almost a king, not quite. And then, of course, the rainbow theme did not hurt it at all either, so. $50, $18 shipping. I think it only cost me about $15 to ship. Harley Davidson, she's on a bicycle. Yes, they made some bicycles. Some more blowout dresses. Started them at $10. I paid about four, three seventy-five dollars to $4 for these. They were new with tags in this closeout at a um, closeout uh, mall type situation. But for some reason, junior dresses, junior just doesn't work. Junior sizing, at least it doesn't work for me. I've heard other people say that too. So if you're looking at junior sizings, kind of be extra diligent on making your decision because it didn't work for me either. So the gurgle pot and this actually was by gurgle pot this one sold for a little more because of the color okay and this was a larger one and because of that color there weren't a lot with that exact color now there are some gurgle pots made by other companies and vintage and ornate i saw some sell for like three hundred dollars this was a modern one by gurgle pot even there's something about the way it's, these are designed and when you pour it it kind of gurgles like a fish okay this didn't work for me. I put it half price. I ran a half price sale sometime in the last couple months. And um, this was like Red Balls on Fire, um, more popular in England, Think, Trip, Lip Service, that kind of stuff. The higher end stuff you see at, at um, Hot Topic, kind of goth. So I marketed this. I don't know if goth is still as popular, so I added in steampunk, of course, which I don't know how much longer steampunk is going to last. Wasteland, not too many people even know about that or cater to that. Um, I love post-apocalyptic stuff, festivals, movies, so I'm highly aware of it, and it is a thing. There's a subculture that does that. They have their own, like, websites and events, and so Wasteland, post-apocalyptic apocalyptic stuff. How cute is that? Fuzzy Nation is the brand. They make different kinds. This one was in good shape. A little Yorkie. 
this should have went for a few dollars more but i gave up on it it might have been the size was too small so i marked or i let it go for around 30. oh i can't always remember about 30 but she loved it she loved it but normally this brand is better maybe that's just the muted color scheme just wasn't as popular but that is a good name though elena katan don't quote me on how to say it i read things i don't always hear how they're being you know how to say them a vintage dooney and burke with the pebble leather i wasn't sure about this because it wasn't in the greatest shape dooney and burke this vintagey stuff is mm, maybe you know it's a little iffy but because it was red white and blue i'm like I think that's what will make this work. It's red, white, and blue. New with tags Pendleton. This is a collab with, they do it with different parks and iconic places around the world. This was a collab for Glacier National Park. I wasn't sure about this because this was customized already, but it only said Gina's doll and only on the big one. And it was new in tags, so I felt like, okay, that kind of saves it. If it wouldn't have been pre-monogrammed, I think I would have got more. This went overseas. I took 40 It didn't cost a whole lot. Maybe $7 for the set. But it helped with, you know, the Pendleton name. Super plush. Oh my gosh, that was super plush. This was Hannah's. She had left over. Still new in package. Somewhat, not quite, uh, borderline vintage. Let's just say retro, I guess. Uh, but My Little Mermaid. Disney. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I think we talked about this on Instagram or in another video. This was a hot mess. The colors had bled everywhere, but someone still, I put not perfect, someone still wanted this. And I don't blame them because it was beautiful. I think I'm kind of where, you know what, I think we've already talked about all this stuff, haven't we? Yeah, but this was really beautiful up close. There's the Barbie, which I didn't know if it was a four or a five. If you watched my video the other day, my haul video when I bought the magazine, the Barbie Collector Edition magazine, which helped identify the Ponytail series. This is the what I'm talking about here. It turned out it was a five. If it would have been a four, it would have been worth more money. But still, that was a good value. So as soon as I figured out that it was a five and not a four, I put it half price from 150 to 75 and that was it. We were done. So I hit the sweet spot for what it actually was, which was a five. Picked up these free magazines at my dad's chiropractor, massage therapist. Um, they're also into medical marijuana here. It, this is Colorado, so medical marijuana and recreational are legal. So, but some of these were just about medical marijuana, but a couple of them were trade magazines, which you don't just go, go buy off the rack, trade magazines. Um, you're lucky to even, you know, you have to search out if they're even available or you went to a trade show or something like that. This had a couple of trade magazines about being in the cannabis um, business. And so that's really popping right now in our state and a couple other. I imagine it's going to follow suit across the United States because of popularity of the general public and because big business is going to want to make their money off of it, which is what's happening. So all those little free magazines, 30 bucks plus shipping. I don't hardly ever, ever do free shipping. Hager, not Royal Hager. Know the difference if you're learning like me. This is a Hager and there's a Royal Hager. Beautiful, still new with tags. It was new old stock, perfect condition. I actually, I participated in a cross-posting event at one of my new groups I joined um, for identifying old and vintage items, antique and vintage. One of the mods started a Pinterest group where all of us could participate um, cross-posting up to five a day and so I was one of the people that played along and I posted it up there and it sold it actually sold to one of the members that was also participating and she loved it 
So, hi Wanda, thank you. <laughs> Definitely pays to network. Some vintage tiki shot glasses. There's the other St. John pants that I told you I sold for, oh, 48 How about that? <clears throat> because if you saw in the haul video the other day, I picked up another pair of St. John. And I cautioned those that are new, St. John, not St. John's Day, right? Okay, the, oh, I think we're done. There's the other, yeah, I think this is about where we, this is about, yeah, the frogs. Okay, um, one more time though, if you missed it, shout out to Jen, Thrift to Travel. I was watching her little YouTube video where she tells us, you know, discontinued items that she's found. And she put out about this. I knew I had them that I bought off a clearance rack, a whole bunch of them, like a couple years ago. I had just been using them. <laughs> so I quickly ran upstairs. I had two bottles that were still full. Photographed them, listed them. They sold within 36 hours. Um, so Jen, Thrift to Travel, if you're interested in doing the discontinued item, she is so good at that. There are a couple more people um, that are helping to make a list on Instagram, but I love Jen Thrift to Travel on Instagram and YouTube. Thrift to Travel, Jen, long blonde hair. I actually went back to one of her videos and said, hey, do you have a tip jar or something? And I got her PayPal. She was kind of shy about it. I'm like, you need a tip jar or an address or something that we can send you thank yous or gratuity or fan mail and she was kind of shy about it so i messaged her i dm'd her privately on instagram i said come on now give me your paypal address i want i want to tip you out for this and let me buy you your coffee your fancy coffee and a pastry tomorrow so she said you know so she did that i'm and i sent her ten dollars to her paypal so she could get her fancy coffee on her next sourcing trip because look at that. I mean, I paid like, I don't know, a dollar or something for each of these. I would not have known. Seriously, that's not my main groove. But now I keep an eye on her and a couple other people that are kind of organizing all that. Um, I checked the other day. She sold hers for good money too. I think she sold a bottle the other day for 60, about 60. All right, you guys. So those are the highlights of what sold. Everything doesn't show up anymore on solds if you, unless you, um, there's something that you have to do. You have to uncheck something. But some people purposely want, you know, their solds to be hidden. Me, not so much. I, I don't have high competition items. Um, I sold a few things on Poshmark, a few things like locally. But that's all for today, okay? It's Labor Day weekend. Again, remember, let's keep our thoughts for our friends in Florida, all right? I will see you next time or in one of your videos. And you guys have tried to have a good weekend. Thanks. Okay, that's all.